Hi, everybody, and welcome to this week. This week, what we're talking about is genetic variation, which is um, different ways that your DNA can actually change. So, um, like always, we're going to start with our objectives and our vocabulary. The vocabulary is actually on Quizlet already. Um, the objectives are list the types of proteins and their function, explain how variation occurs in DNA, and explain how mutations are passed to um, offspring. So what I want you to remember from last week and the week before and everything we've done so far this year, right, is that genes are segments of DNA that code for a protein. So a small piece of DNA, or not even super small, but a smaller piece of DNA that codes for a protein. Genes are then transcribed and translated, right, during protein synthesis, transcribed, rewritten, translated, changed into the protein. And then your gene is going to give you, is that your actual genotype, right? Like the letters like big A, little a, heterozygous, homozygous, or your genetic makeup, right? How your genes are expressed is going to be your phenotype or your physical appearance. It gives you what you look like, right? Your hair color, your eye color, your skin color, okay? So here's our transcription translation process. So let's remember that gene expression happens in two different steps. We talked about this last week, right? Transcription is when you write um, an mRNA strand. So you're actually taking the DNA and you're rewriting it. You're copying it into mRNA. The only difference is when you do your complementary base pairs, you're going to put U's, right, rather than T's. Translation is then when you go from your mRNA, your nucleotide, to a protein or amino acid. And you remember I said that when you translate something, you go from one language to the other. This you're going from one macro organic macromolecule to a different organic macromolecule. Um, genes code for proteins. So genes in your DNA are going to code for all the proteins in your body. So this is how you make everything in your body pretty much. All right. The proteins in your body are going to be grouped into three main categories, hormones and receptors, enzymes and structural proteins. So the first of our three types of proteins are hormones and receptors. So hormones and receptors are proteins that are going to help us regulate our bodies. All right? Hormones um, are going to be secreted by our body, so they're made and secreted by your body, and they're going to um, be responsible for changes that happen in your body. So for example, you create insulin in your body, and insulin is going to cause your body to store sugar. right? And you create melatonin in your body, which is another hormone that's going to cause you to um, sleep or wake up. Right, what I want you to notice, and both of these are actually proteins. Notice that they both have um, IN in the end of it. Lots of proteins end up ending in IN. Okay, so your body makes them, and they're chemicals that help you regulate. They almost like work with the nervous system to regulate the processes in the body. In this picture down here, we have hormones as these yellow things, okay? Then the next part, which pairs with hormones, are proteins called receptor proteins. These are proteins that sit on the surface of the cell, like this guy right here right? They're shaped specifically like the hormone. So they accept the hormone, right? Or they detect the hormone and then they cause the cell to have some type of a reaction. So you need a receptor, right? To um, receive that hormone and you need a hormone to tell the receptor what works. So they always go together. You have hormones and receptors that work hand in hand to make our body um, react to our internal environment. All right. So Next type of protein we're going to look at is enzymes. All right, so enzymes are proteins that your body makes that are used to speed up chemical reactions. All right, so they work by lowering the activation energy that needs to make a reaction occur. So what activation energy is, is the amount that your body has to like put in to make something happen. So think of it as like climbing up a hill. Okay, and I have a, a graph over here. Let's see if I can get my pen to work. I have a graph over here and this first bar right? This one right here is without an enzyme. You have to get to this point up here, right? Your body has to put in that much energy because this is energy over here. We have to put in that much energy to then make like a sugar breakdown, let's say, or some kind of reaction to happen, right? But if you have an enzyme, right? I'm going to change my color. If you have an enzyme, the enzyme makes it so you only have to put in this much energy to make that sugar breakdown, right? So there's a lot of um, reactions in your body that wouldn't happen if you didn't have enzymes. So like you wouldn't be able to digest your food if you didn't have enzymes. Does that make sense? So enzymes are proteins, super important to make our body actually work. Um, oh, that's what that one just says. There you go. Uh, 
um, last type of protein are structural proteins. These are the proteins that you're like more familiar with, okay? When you think of proteins, this is what you think of. So these are the proteins that are used for all the um, structures in our body, all right? They make up parts of the cell membrane. Um, so substances can move in and out of the cell. So protein channels and stuff like that. They're going to make up our muscles. They're gonna be um, tendons and ligaments, right? Um, they're the protein that you think of when you think of eating protein, like when you think of food and you eat more protein, those are structural proteins. You're eating um, muscle, right? Um, these structural proteins already also carry substances like hemoglobin is going to um, move oxygen in our blood. Um, and like I said, they make up our muscles so that we are able to move. So structural proteins are the proteins that you pretty much see when you look at somebody. So now to get to um, a little deeper into this week's stuff, um, what we're talking about is genetic variation. So we know that our genes code for proteins, right? Our proteins give us our looks um, and help our body run. So how do our genes change? Because none of you look like me. The only person that looks like me is my twin sister, right? Because she has the same DNA. So how does our genes change and how do those change happen to make our proteins different, right? So genetic variation is gonna occur for three different reasons. And one of them we've already done. So the first reason is crossing over and random segregation of chromosomes during meiosis. We did this, we did crossing over when we talked about um, meiosis and we did random segregations when we talked about meiosis. So both of those we'll talk about again, but we've already done this. The second one is mutations that occur during replication and transcription. And then the third one is mutations that occur because of environmental factors. So first one is mutations that occur during crossing over or not mutations, sorry, variation that occurs during, because of crossing over and random segregation of chromosomes. So for crossing over, we got two pitches over here. Let me get my little handy dandy pen working. Right, so I've got this picture. This is crossing over, right? This happens during meiosis when we're making the sex cells. Get out of here. My like thing showed up wrong and I don't want it. When one chrome, when the chromosome pairs are like this, right? And the pieces swap, right? And they swap pieces so that like the top of this guy would become red and the top of this guy would become green, right? So they actually exchange pieces from one chromosome to the X next. So that's crossing over the exchange of genetic material from one homologous chromosome with the other. And then the other thing that happens during meiosis is when they line up on that equator of the cell during metaphase, um, and then they pull apart during anaphase, they line up differently. So like, look at these different lineups that we have. We have four different, because we only have four chromosomes here, right? We have four different orientations or ways that they can line up. So if these split and half went that way and half went that way, half went that way, half went that way, they would make like eight different beginning gametes, right? Which would then split again. So when you combine crossing over, when you have chromosomes cross over and then segregate different ways, it creates a whole bunch of variation in the DNA. And this is why siblings don't ever look like each other because they have different sperm and different eggs that were fertilized and each sperm and egg have different genetic material. And though it's similar, it's slightly different. Um, our next type of variation that can happen is a mutation. So a mutation is a change in the DNA, right? And it can, can is an important word here, so write it big, it can cause a change in the protein that's produced. It doesn't always cause a change in the protein that's produced, but it can, okay? And these mutations are random, all right? So the mutations cause different variations of the gene, all right? Mutations are things that cause like color blindness or, um, hemophilia. These are genetic disorders that are caused by gene mutations, right? Um, the two places that mutations are going to occur, right, or the two times that mistakes happen is during replication. So when we're matching up, so when our body matches up like A to T and T to A and C to G, you know, like we have our DNA and we're replicating it and we're making a new strand of DNA, sometimes it doesn't do this right. 
and then that causes a mutation, right? That's during replication. It also happens during transcription when we have our original DNA, like we have a picture down there. When we have an original DNA and we're making the mRNA. Sometimes when we copy it, it doesn't work out right, right? Some think of some of the times you did it in class and it didn't work out right, and you're like, I don't, I don't have this anywhere. Where did I mess up, right? It's because you made a mutation, you made a mistake copying it, and our body does that too. And that causes variations in the DNA, which can affect the proteins. And um, the last place that we can get variations in our DNA is from um, mutations from the environment. So mutations can be caused by radiation, chemicals, and some infections, all right? And radiation comes from x-rays or UV radiation. That's like the sun, right? We all know the sun causes skin cancer. The sun causes skin cancer because it causes mutations in the DNA in your skin cells. So when the DNA mutates, it then is unable to control its ability to divide. And um, it just keeps dividing and dividing and dividing, right? That's a mutation caused by an environmental factor because you were in the sun, all right? And um, other mutations can be caused by chemicals from things like um, cigarette smoke or from chemicals that are in the air, right? Depending on people's work, sometimes they work with chemicals that um, are carcinogenic, right? That means they cause cancer because they cause mutations, right? So um, those chemicals can mutate your DNA, but this is something from the environment that you're doing that's causing this. And the last one is um, infection. Sometimes specific bacteria or viruses are able to cause changes in your DNA which then give you a mutation. So the last thing I need you to pull all together and realize, right, is that if I cut off my finger, right, let's say I get an accident, cut my finger off, and I only have four fingers, right? When I have kids, am I going to have kids with four fingers or kids with five fingers, right? We know that if I cut off my finger and then have kids, my kids are still going to have five fingers, right? Because I didn't change my DNA in the sex cells that I then passed on to my kids. And that's why we have this picture here, because sperm and egg have their DNA from meiosis. They come together and make the offspring. The only way you can pass on a mutation is if the mutation occurs during meiosis and that sex cell is then used during fertilization, that mutation will be passed on to the offspring. Or if the mutation occurs in a gamete or in a sex cell that's already formed, right? So if like women are born with all their eggs, if something happens and it causes a mutation in their eggs, then they're gonna pass that mutation on to the offspring. So the mutation has to occur in the DNA in your sex cell or in your gamete for the mutation to be passed on to the offspring. If I have a mutation in any of my body cells, that's not gonna cause me to then pass that on. If I get cancer from smoking, I can't pass that to my kids unless they smoke because they saw me smoking. Make sense? All right, make sure you have your notes copy. Make sure you have your drawings done, any like drawings from lecture that you feel like are important that help you learn the material. Um, and write down any questions and we'll talk about it when you come to school. Thanks.